Hi, my name's Kate. I am a high school math teacher at the beginning of my 18th year of teaching. Today I thought that I would just do a little update video kind of sharing with you guys, um, you know, how things have been going since my move. So if you guys have followed along with me, you've known that I have moved after 17 years of teaching in one district to a new school, new district, new everything. And I just thought that I'd kind of give you guys an update and share how things are going. So I'm currently in the classroom that I'm in most often. So our school is on a four period block rotation schedule and teachers teach typically six periods. So three periods one day, three periods the other day. So I am in this room five periods and the other teacher that's in this room is in here for three periods. So I mean technically it would be considered my room but definitely share because the other teacher that's in here is a science teacher and clearly this is a science lab. So I would say that has been my biggest struggle so far is just sharing a classroom. And it has absolutely nothing to do with the teacher that I share the room with. It has everything to do with the fact that it's a shared space. Um, the teacher that I share with, we definitely agree on so many things. The other teacher is super nice, very accommodating, and we're definitely working with each other to make sure that we have the space that we need, have the things that we need, and just kind of trying to make it work for both of us. Where it becomes difficult is that on my plan period, I'm not in here, which means that during my plan period when I'm making all of my copies for the day, I'd love to say for the week, not there yet, but definitely for you know the next day, the next two days, then I have to hold on to them up in my math science office space and I can't just immediately put them here and get them organized like I've been able to in the past. And that's been a challenge because there have been several times where it's like, oh yep, going to get the copies and realize that I left them up in the math science office. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like that's really frustrating. And I wish, unfortunately, it's not as simple as just running up there real quick because just going up there and back down again to my desk without stopping and talking to anybody is a four minute round trip. So it's not, you know, like hopping three doors down and grabbing things. So I really have to be on my game about that. I've started having places in my office where I put the copies that go in this room and I'm in another classroom one period of the day. So I have a special place where I put those copies and then anytime I go past the rooms, where I know like after school, before school, I drop those copies off. Um, so working on getting that, it's getting better, definitely much less stressful than it was to begin with. Um, the other hard thing, and I didn't realize this would be as much of a challenge as it is until just recently, trying to get students to make up tests and quizzes because I don't really have my own like quiet space has been a challenge. Um, when students wanna come in before school, Sometimes I say, hey, you can meet me in this classroom here. Sometimes it's in the classroom upstairs, but sometimes it needs to be in the math science office. So I'm always like, okay, you guys have to send me an email a day ahead of time so I can tell you where I'm gonna be and where you're gonna meet me. Um, and then, you know, students that wanna take their test on their plan period or on their uh, study hall period, sometimes that's during my prep. And because the other teacher's in here during my prep, I can't say, yeah, just come to my room. So then I have to, okay, we're gonna go to the math science office and hope that the conference room that we have in there is open. And if it's not, then they can't take the test. So that's something and, that I've had to deal with and we're making it work, we're figuring it out, but I didn't really have this issue in the past, but I don't think that was necessarily because I had my own room. I think part of that was just because kids didn't come in and make up their tests as much as the kids do now because now I have all college level classes and these kids are really trying to make sure that they stay on top of their grades. Another thing that I've noticed is that, um, so this classroom that I'm in the majority of the time, it's very far removed from the other math teachers, which makes me really sad. So during passing periods, I'm out in the hallway with nobody, um, which is sad. And so when I'm up in the other classroom that I'm in one period a day, it's amongst all the other math teachers. So during the passing period before you know class starts, I'm out in the hallway and I'm seeing other math teachers and I absolutely love it. So I definitely feel a little bit isolated down here and that's kind of sad. And I know that's not, you know, that's first world problems. Don't need to, you know, whatever. But it's just, it's the reality of, you know, this is kind of how I'm feeling. I definitely am missing my teacher bestie that was next door and all of my other colleagues that were like right around me I could you know quickly run over to the other hallway and talk with them and I know I'm gonna get that here I know this is not my permanent room who knows next year I may be upstairs I'm definitely gonna ask um, 
So, you know, that's just something I'm gonna navigate. Um, so, you know, knowing that this isn't a permanent room, I haven't really done a whole lot in the way of decorating. I do have, so you can see these right here. I'll probably leave them up for quite a while until I've got something else great to put up there. Um, I do have one bulletin board that I covered with bulletin board paper and I haven't even decorated that yet. I do have something that I'm putting on. My students did a fall color by number. Let me show you. So they did this Halloween color by number activity and they got to color either pumpkins or ghosts. And so I do, Need to get these hung up on my bulletin board it's a lot of fun so I have a few of those activities so I'll leave the link for those in the description below if you're looking for some fun Halloween activities um, I also have a haunted house one that's really cool I almost did that um, but I didn't have a resource made for the topic that I needed so I do need to get those hung up and start working on that but definitely the room has not come together like it did um, in my previous schools and that's okay I know that again this isn't my permanent room I'm gonna be moving so I'm trying to make it look nice without spending hours and hours and hours decorating and a ton of money decorating knowing that I'm gonna move as far as the classes go I absolutely love what I'm teaching right now thankfully right now I am not teaching geometry I was teaching that for way too many years and I am glad to have a break from teaching geometry so right now I am teaching pre-calculus and college algebra so if you're familiar pre-calculus the first semester is like the college algebra stuff the you know the review of algebra 1 algebra 2 type thing and then the second semester is the trig part of that the unit circle and all of that stuff so my college algebra class is that first semester of pre-calculus just spread through the year so it's a much slower paced class um, and it's it's been a lot of fun I mean I'm in the you know we've been working in college algebra on exponents on factoring on you know solving all the different types of equations so you know we're definitely in the algebra 1 algebra 2 phase like heavy right now and then we're gonna start getting into some of the more exciting things soon and a pre-calculus we're in our second unit so we're talking all about functions so we just finished up um, looking at piecewise functions. And then we're gonna be talking about shifts in graphs. And then I'm really excited because I have an activity for my students. It's one that I partnered with TI Calculator for, Texas Instruments Calculator. Um, and the students do a scavenger hunt activity identifying the different shifts in graphs. And when they identify the shift, it'll tell them, you know, yes, this one goes left two, right one, or, or left two, down one. And then next to it, it gives them a piecewise function that they're supposed to graph and then they can use their graphing calculator they're going to graph all those different piecewise functions and by the end of it they have a really cool picture that appears on their calculator so just a really fun activity for my kids and it's going to be a great way to review phase shifts and it's going to be a good learning opportunity on how to graph piecewise functions in the calculator one of the other struggles that I'm having, and I know I'm talking a lot about struggles, but I think that's a good thing because that's, you know, the reality. I don't have an iPad to teach with now, so I have a smart board, which I had at my own school, and the smart board in the one classroom that I'm in just one period a day, fantastic, no issues with it. The one that I'm in most of the day really struggles. It constantly freezes, and it just, it's not working, and I really don't like teaching at the board itself because I feel like, you know, I'm always, you know, you're, you're writing on the board and you have your back to the kids and I don't like that. And I'm so used to having that iPad. So if you've seen my other day in the lives before I moved here, I always had my iPad and I was always doing that. Now I did use the board as well, but the iPad most of the time. And with the struggle of the smart board, I've really been trying to get an iPad. And um, I was talking with one of the other teachers. So I'm on a PLC with one other pre-calc teacher. He has an iPad. So I was just asking him about it a little bit. And he's like, oh yeah, the school bought it for me last year. I was like, are you kidding me? Like that would be fantastic. So we talked to our secretary and she's like, yeah, I should be able to use some of our like extra funds to purchase an iPad for you. That'd be no problem. I just need to get approval from administration. So I emailed my administrator and I was like, hey, you know, these are my struggles. This is what I really want. These are all of the reasons why. These are all the things that I've tried. And I know that, you know, this was bought for another teacher last year and I would absolutely love it if this was a possibility and she emailed me back and she said unfortunately tech is the one that has to approve all tech purchases the tech department and they don't approve anything Apple so the answer is no I was like okay 
you approved it for somebody last year and I get it. So we do have, um, there's a, a place where I can apply for a grant. So I'm gonna work on that. I only have a couple of weeks to get that done, but I'm gonna try to apply for a grant and see if I can get an iPad through the grant. Um, I am using right now a Wacom tablet. Don't know if I'm even pronouncing it right. There, you can see it, Wacom, Wacom tablet. So it's this and you know there's a little stylus here and you write on this and it writes on the board so this basically acts as like my mouse the problem is well first of all there's no screen right so when i'm writing on it i can't look here or be facing my students i still have to say, face the board in order to see where i'm writing and the other thing even though it's not right now it is not bluetooth not wireless so i have to have it connected to my computer which means that i'm still tied to the front of the classroom. So this is definitely, it's working better than the smart board because I'm not dealing with some of those tech issues, but it's still keeping me tied right up to the front of the room, which is something that I don't like. I love being able to wander around with my iPad and teach and kind of like, you know, talk to kids one-on-one -on -one as I'm teaching and I'm not having to break up that cycle of teaching versus helping kids. So still navigating that, um, you know, technology issues, technology is always, you know, changing, always an issue anyway, you know, when it does work doesn't work so that's that's a challenge that I'm struggling with right now but hopefully I can get a grant to buy myself an iPad not looking for anything special I keep joking with the kids when I was using the smart board every time it would break and I was like so if anybody has an extra smart board you know just like lying around your bedroom please bring it in for me and the kids know because every time it would stop or it would just like I wouldn't even have the pen touching the board and it just start writing all over the board so definitely a big struggle working on navigating through that seeing if I can figure it out. Otherwise, you know, just gonna deal with it. And um, yeah, maybe next year, if I move classrooms, my, my smart board will be a little smarter than this one. You know, it is what it is. Overall, I think that I'm definitely happy with the move. I know right now, as even with all the stress that I'm dealing with, with the new school and trying to figure some things out, got a few issues that I'm kind of working around, you know, working with the classroom and all of that, I'm still, extremely happy that I made this move to the new school. Even though I miss my colleagues, um, I just, I feel like when I get in front of the kids and teach, it's it's a great feeling. I feel like it's, it's where I'm meant to be. So definitely happy with that move. So I do want to say that if you are a teacher and you're just, you know, you're struggling, you're not sure that you enjoy teaching anymore. Maybe it is the workplace and maybe it's not even like, you know, you hate the people you work with, you hate your administrators, because I loved all of that. It just, and even the kids were fantastic. I can't even, you know, put a finger on exactly what it was, but maybe, you know, try moving to a different place and you may be happier now. It's going to take some time. Like I said, I mean, it's the beginning of October and you know there are still a lot of kinks that I'm trying to work out but overall I leave and I'm definitely happier than I was last year so if you're struggling try it I would love to know are there questions that you guys have about you know the transition that I went through about you know any of that how I went from one school to another any questions at all please leave those in the comments below I'll definitely be sure to answer those if it's a longer more in-depth thing I would be happy to do another video so please drop any of your comments and questions in the comments below if you guys enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up if you are interested in following along more with my journey as I navigate this crazy new world that I'm in please subscribe I do upload videos every Friday but you can hit that notification bell to be notified the next time a video goes live. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Bye!